everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. I am really excited to share this with y'all. This is the table that I learned when I took trigonometry years ago. And this table has helped me to be able to tell you any value for any of the six trigonometric functions. And you really only have to memorize a few numbers and then you can build the rest of the table using definitions and identities and those sort of things. Really cool. So. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the table. What I do is I write pi over six, pi over four, pi over three, which is just 30, 45, 60, okay? So I can actually go ahead and write those. This is in radians. We tend to use mostly radians, so I use radians, but I'll write the degrees up here just so we're clear on what these are. So these are angles, and we have the sine and cosine of these angles, which is what? Well, it follows a pattern. One, two, Three, three, two, one. This is how I remember it. One, two, three, three, two, one. Okay? Everything is over two. One over two. Two over two. Three over two. Three over two. Two over two. One over two. And everything has a square root in the numerator. Square root of one, though, that's just one. So I don't really need to write that one there. Square root of one half. I'm sorry, one half. Square root of two, root three root three, root two, square root of one is just one. So we're good to go. You can double check this if you have your unit circle in front of you, but these are the values for sine and cosine of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. So wait a minute, this table isn't really complete though, right? What about tangent? What about cotangent, cosecant, all that stuff? Well, we can find those using either the definitions for sine and cosine or using identities, okay? So let's write tangent and let's think about this. Using identities, what is tangent? Well, there's an identity that says, I'll go ahead and write it here, even though I probably will end up erasing it. Tangent theta equals sine theta over cosine theta. We can use that, and we can do this over this, right? We can also use the definition of sine and cosine. Since sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over x, right? These are all fractions, so can't we just say that one is y, two is r, root three is x, two is r, so can't we just do one over root three? Either of these explanations works perfect, okay? With this, you may have to do a little more work, but either way, they both work, so I get one over root three, right? When I rationalize the denominator, I get root three over three, which actually is the value for tangent 30 degrees, root three over three, so I get one over root three, and when I multiply by root three over root three to rationalize the denominator, I get root three over three, okay? What about this? Root two, root two, that's just one, right? That one's pretty clear to see, one. What about this? Root three over two, one. So that's root three over one, which is just root three, okay? Square root of three. So either way, if you wanna think of it as identities or if you wanna just use the definition, both of these explanations work. So now, I'm gonna show y'all how to find cotangent, and it's the same idea, cotangent. So again, what have we memorized so far? All we've memorized is sine and cosine, one, two, three, three, two, one. We've built this using identities, okay? And like I said, we can build the rest using identities. All we'll need to memorize is that one, two, three, three, two, one, it's pretty cool. So cotangent, how can we get cotangent? Well, we can use the definition, which is x over y, okay, we can use the definition. And what does x over y mean? Well, it's the reciprocal of tangent. That's another way to think of it, is we can take the reciprocal, right? Because cotangent theta equals one over tangent theta. So there are two different ways, again, to think of this. So what do I have here? The reciprocal of one over root three, that's just root three. The reciprocal of one is still just one. The reciprocal of root three gives me one over root three, which we've already shown when we rationalize the denominator is equal to root three over three. So there's actually a third way to think of this. And if you haven't noticed the pattern yet, there's a pattern. This tangent of 30 is the same as the cotangent of 60, okay? And this is actually called a cofunction identity. And it's a pattern between sine and cosine, tangent and cotangent, and secant and cosecant. Notice how the one half lines up with the one half over here. So basically, the two angles that add up to 90 degrees, the sine and cosine will be the same. So if I have sine of 30, 
that's equivalent to cosine of 60. If I have sine of 45, that's equivalent to cosine of 45 because those both add up to 90. Sine of 60, that'll be the same as cosine of 30. This will be the same for secant and cosecant as well. The secant of 30 will equal the cosecant of 60. So this is a cool pattern to notice. And by noticing this, we can build our table basically even quicker, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and use that idea to get, well, once I get secant, I'll use that to get cosecant, okay? Once I get secant, I'll use that to get cosecant. Let me draw my lines here, stay organized here. So how can I get secant? Again, definition, secant is what? R over X, okay? Another way to think of it is I could take the reciprocal of cosine, okay? So what's the reciprocal of cosine? Two over root three, and once I rationalize the denominator, I get what? I multiply by root three over root three, and I get two root three over three. So what does that mean? Well, that's gonna be cosecant of 60 degrees, two root three over three. See how we're saving time by understanding these identities? Okay, so what is the reciprocal of root two over two? That's two over root two, which gives me what? Two over root two, when I rationalize the denominator, I multiply by root two over root two. That gives me two root two over two. And there's a lot of twos in there. Wait, no it doesn't. Two root two over two. Was that right? Did the twos cancel and that's just equal to root two? I guess so. Did I do that right? Yeah, okay, cool. That's equal to root two. See, I'm telling you, I don't have these memorized. I do not have these memorized. I find them each time. You do not need to memorize stuff. I hate memorizing, so I use stuff like this to where, you know, if I can get around memorizing, I get around it, you know? So, what else do we have? Secant of 60 degrees. And what does this mean, by the way? Root two is here as well. Root two is here for cosecant of 45, since those add up to 90. So, what do I have here? Secant, I can take the reciprocal of cosine here. That one's easy, that's just two. That means the two goes here. So I have found all six trig functions for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, the values of all six trig functions by just memorizing these three numbers, basically. One, two, three, and the three, two, one, and knowing where those, those go. So now you may say, well, these aren't all the angles. What about zero degrees? What about pi over two and pi and all this stuff? Well, you can find zero and pi over two and pi because those are quadrantal angles. That's what we call axial angles, whatever you wanna call it. Basically what it means is, if we draw our y-axis and our x-axis, zero is here, pi over two is here, pi is here, three pi over two, these are all on one of the axes, right? Well, what does that mean? Well, we can easily find those points. Think about our unit circle. It has a radius of one, so that means the distance from this center to this point, to any point around the circle is one. So that means that what? This distance is one, which means my x is one. We're on the x-axis, that means my y is zero, one, zero. So what does this mean? Well, the cosine of zero will be one. The sine of zero will be zero. And we can use those two to find the rest, right? Because our y is zero, anything with y in the denominator is gonna be undefined. Cotangent of zero will be undefined. As well as what else has y in the bottom? S cosecant, that will be undefined, okay? And we can use this for any quadrantal angle. Three pi over two, this is gonna be what? Well, now x is negative one, y is zero. What about down here? Well, now x is zero, y is negative one. This works for any quadrantal angle. No memorizing required, no memorizing. So, okay, well now what about other angles? What about 11 pi over six? What about seven pi over four? Well, that's when reference angles come into play, right? Using reference, which I'll have to talk about in another video because that's a whole other topic, but you can use the idea of reference angles. And if you know the reference angle, and you know the quadrant that the angle is in, you can find the exact value still just using and thinking about this table. So I hope all this stuff helps, I really do. I was excited to share this because this just changed my world when it comes to trigonometry and not having to memorize stuff. Way less stress when you don't have to memorize on exams and just in general and moving forward, you know, it's, it's really cool to be able to do all this stuff in calculus when, you know, half the class can't tell you what's the sign of pi over two, you know? So hopefully this video helped. Hit like if it did, comment below any comments, subscribe, watch all my videos, and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you in the next video.